Let's review some basic principles associated with digital inputs. Now, when we say the word digital, that suggests two discrete levels of a signal. Now, I'll use this triangle to denote the input electronics for a digital input. And I'll keep track of the actual input voltage as Vn of t. Now this is always an analog signal regardless of whether or not you say it's digital or analog. What makes it digital it really is the interpretation of that analog signal. Let, let me show you what I mean. Let me keep track of the analog signal Vn of t as a function of time. And this is a waveform that looks pretty digital in the sense that it has basically two distinct levels. I'll put a threshold between the two. Anything below that threshold we can interpret as say logic zero exactly. And if it's above the threshold then we would interpret that as a logic one. Maybe if this is a little bit longer we could think of this as a pair of zeros and so forth. But the idea is where is the signal in relationship to that threshold? Now let me draw something that looks much more uh, analog in nature, for example, kind of wanders around, has a whole variety of different values. So a characteristic of what people refer to as an analog signal is something that is continuous and has many levels. So as that signal kind of wanders around, it, it again boils down to is it above or below that threshold. So maybe it's, we could think of this as one momentarily, then back to zero, one for a little bit, back to zero for a while, and so forth. All right, let's take a look at the uh, ideas associated with hysteresis then, which is closely related to this idea of a threshold. Hysteresis is a property of a digital input that reduces sensitivity to electrical noise. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's again refer or return to this idea of the threshold and we'll apply something that is clearly an analog-like signal. And in fact, let me give it a reasonable amount of electrical noise on the second portion of the signal right here. And the thing to notice is that it kind of wanders around back and forth pretty quickly as the signal crosses that threshold. Now at this point I'm sketching the digital interpretation of that waveform with respect to that single threshold. If the waveform is clean it's pretty unambiguous. You get either low or high. But when the signal has a significant amount of noise associated with it, you get a lot of spurious crossings of that threshold and that uh, little extra bit of chatter there is not desirable. Because we're probably looking at that signal and saying it was just one uh, distinct crossing but we see a lot of chatter on the threshold. So here's the solution. Let's go ahead and use a pair of thresholds rather than just a single threshold. And let's see why this would work out. Let me take that threshold and split that into two. And which threshold we use depends on which direction the signal is coming. So what we do is look to see when it crosses the upper threshold. But as soon as that threshold is crossed, we wait until it crosses the other threshold going in the opposite direction. The input in this case has some memory to keep track of which threshold to actually invoke. But the nice thing about this is once you've crossed the threshold, you get a clear, unambiguous indicator that your signal has changed, and that gives us a nice clean transition even when we have a pretty significant amount of noise on the signal. So hysteresis is a very important uh, property of, of a good digital input. All right, let's also take a look at the notion of pull-down resistors. The digital input has a very high input resistance normally, 
and imagine that we wanted to use a push button switch or some other kind of on off sensor, uh, maybe like a proximity sense sensor wired as a switch. Uh, the idea here is that when the push button switch is open, we want a logic zero indicator. And when it's closed, as I'm showing here, then we want to have a logic one indicator. Now clearly, when the push button switch is closed, we've got a nice solid collection, connection of five volts to the digital input, and we get a clear indication of logic one for our interpretation. But now when the push button switch is opened again, if you think about it, it's really not very clear what voltage the digital input is at. Now we ultimately wanted to give us an interpretation of zero, but is that actually possible based on the circuitry that I'm showing here? So what we really have is a what we call a floating input, meaning that the input signal is really not clearly connected to, to anything in particular. Therefore, its input voltage will vary considerably according to circuit noise and other extraneous types of signals. The solution then is to add a specific type of resistor known as a pull-down resistor, uh, and we'll go ahead and place that right here. This resistor connects down to ground, and the idea is to basically anchor that input to a known signal when the button is not being pressed. Again, since the input has very high input resistance, that current is pretty much zero. Well, if the switch is open, there's no current there. Consequently, we only have uh, zero current through the resistor. Now, based on Ohm's law, we know if we had negligible current, we also have negligible voltage drop as well. And basically what that says is that the resistor now looks like a weak short to ground, and this input then is attached not as solid as a as a, a piece of wire but it's certainly seeing zero volts so our interpretation then works just fine now the MIDAC DIO inputs include this uh, pull down resistor as a 75k device and also wanted to again uh, mention that the pull-down resistor reduces external circuit complexity, especially when you're using switches on the inputs. And lastly, the hysteresis that I was mentioning earlier, that's included too.